Welcome to Boise, Idaho. Game two of the West Region and the match is George Mason against Maryland. CBS's 20th season covering the NCAA tournament. Now, earlier today, Georgia State advanced with a 50-49 win over the sixth seed Wisconsin Badgers. Panthers rallied from 16 points down. In tonight's night sessions, it's Arkansas against Georgetown, Iowa State against Hampton. And hi, everybody. I'm Craig Buller Jack, along with James Worthy for George Mason. Basically, their offense, their defense centers around a man named George. No question. And the key word for George Evans is maturation. He is really an older player, 30 years old, spent some time in the Army, so he's extremely disciplined. And it's like having a coach on the floor for some of the younger players. And you talk about where's the beef. You're going to see a lot of beef in the paint with Mr. Evans today. Now for Maryland, their offense runs through Juan Dixon. Well, Juan Dixon is a combination points, steals, guy. He's missed excitement. Probably won't be able to stop him. He can distribute the basketball. Does a great job on the defensive end. He's missed everything for Gary Williams. And the head coach of Maryland is Gary Williams. 12th season in College Park. Led the Terrapins to eight straight tournaments. And let's take a look now at the lineups and for Maryland, it's Mouton, Morris, Baxter, Dixon, and Blade. George Mason will go with Laren, Laren Nega, Evans, Young, Price, and Herring. Now, the head coach of George Mason is Jim Larinaga in his fourth season, 0-1 in tournament play, lost back in 1999 in the first round to Cincinnati. And now to our third member of our team, and here's Bob Winslow. Bob? Great, thank you. On paper, this is an overwhelming mismatch. Maryland has great talent. George Mason, not as much. But the only problem is the, the game is not played on paper. It's played on the floor. There's lots of tournament upsets every single year. George Mason played Maryland last year at Cold Field House into overtime, so they have confidence. Thank you, Bob. Our officials today, Tom Harrington, Bernard Clinton, and Hal Lusk. Maryland rolls in from the ACC 21 and 10. George Mason from the Colonial Athletic Association at 18 and 11. The Terrapins third seed in the West. George Mason the 14th seed and we're underway in Boise. You know, it's funny these two teams are from the same area Craig and they see each other all the time play in the same summer leagues so they know each other very well so George Mason won't be intimidated by Maryland. Larinaga on the fast break and the Patriots on the board first. Larinaga the son of the head coach Jim Larinaga. Long rebound opportunity George Mason really pushed the ball up the floor with the long pass. When you make a long pass like that about 50 feet, it gets ahead of the defense before the defense is able to set up. Good transition, but Early 2-0 lead. Larinaga caught in the corner trying to feed baseline. Evans draws the double team. Now the little guy, Price, wraps it around. Floater off the rim. The rebound goes to Maryland. Well, we talked about Evans, but you look at Lonnie Baxter. He's bigger than Evans. He's able to push Evans off the block. Three-pointer. Down. Yeah. Eric Herring. Uh, James Herring's a guy who gets kind of lost in all this hype about George Evans. Evans about a 19-point-per-night player as Blake drives the paint. Steve Blake on the board for Maryland. But Eric Herring's a guy that uh, Maryland has to respect today. Absolutely. He's a quiet assassin. He drained the big three corner to put his team in front to stay in the championship game against UNC Wilmington. So he'll stick to three, hitting 40% from behind the arc. Evans, rebound, hook shot up and in. That's getting number 21. George Evans. Evans. So much talked about uh, this young man. Really, as you talked about the maturation process, he's 30. Turned 30 January 31st, seven years. He spent Army duty in Haiti, Persian Gulf, Belgium. And now you look at George Mason, the facts on George Mason, Fairfax, Virginia, 24,000 the enrollment. Have yet to play a tournament team this season. Could work against you, could work for you. I mean, you haven't seen a, 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 a number one or a top team and they haven't seen you either, so kind of works both ways for you. See the surprise in Evans' eyes as they whistled the, the, the early foul on the senior from Portsmouth, Virginia. Mouton. That may be too much time. Baxter, the follow off the back of the iron, and the rebound goes to Evans. He can do it on both ends. Young on the break. Stolen away in the corner. 
but stepping out of bounds. And it's going to be Maryland basketball. Check that, George Mason. Well, you know Gary Williams wants to get his team in the up-tempo game to try to wear down George Mason. But George Mason's a team that's, that's very solid. Jim Laranaga has his team fundamentally sound. Tough D on the inbounds pass. Now Laranaga reaches in the Herring. Thought about the three, kicks to the corner. And a reach in. And the foul will be whistled against Baxter. That's going to be his first and a timeout call. We'll take a break with George Mason up early by five. 17.52 left, first half in Boise. Gary Williams, James called that quick timeout of the 1752 mark after falling behind here early 7-2. George Mason, Herring trying to handle it. Dribbled out of bounds, and Maryland will have it. But Gary Williams probably not happy with the start of the game, realizing how important the beginning of the game is. You don't want to give George Mason any confidence at all, and they're gaining Quite a bit here early. Now look at the five possessions, their first five. Four turnovers and only one field goal. Now what do you call timeout at 7.52? 17.52. Blake brings it up. Good pressure defense by George Mason. They're playing the passing lanes, keeping the ball on the perimeter, making it very difficult to execute Maryland's defense. Excuse me, offense. James, let's check the facts. On the Maryland Terrapins, they're located in College Park, Maryland. 21 and 10 in the uh, ACC at large berth for this tournament after losing to Duke in the ACC semifinals by two. Bucket put down that time by Blake. His second bucket, 7-4, George Mason. Tough, tough city to play in, Maryland, when there's so many professional teams around and you have that professional fan base who are just as tough. On the collegiate team. And Gary Williams told us he feels like the Maryland's kind of treated as a professional exactly. team. Exactly. They get uh, they get a few more boos than normal college teams and, and criticize a little bit more quickly uh, than you would at this level. Mouton picked up the foul, his first. You know, he saw Williams, he also coached at American, Boston College, Ohio State. And far side to Evans. Back out top. And draining the three ball, Tremaine Price. Well, Tremaine Price is a he's a five foot eight firecracker. You know he led the CAA conference in assists. Solid defender who can pressure you full court, not afraid to take the shot. George Mason two or three from behind the arc. Blake fires up the long ball off the iron. Young climbs the ladder for the rebound. I looked at Gary Williams after Blake took that shot, and he was like, why? So early in the offense, you got to execute a little bit. That shot was blocked by Blake. Quickly off the deck. Leads the break underneath. They kick it far side. Loose ball. Evans, two on one. Up numbers. Bounce pass Young. Good Takes pass. it up and in. Merlin just can't control the basketball. There's far too many turnovers for Gary Williams' team. Got to be patient with a team that you think you can beat. Don't take them for granted. There's another turnover. And a timeout at 15:56. George Mason on top of Maryland, 12-4 in Boise. CBS Sports coverage of the entire NCAA basketball tournament is interactive through Ultimate TV. You can become a part of the ultimate tournament. 12-4, George Mason. The green team is checked in. That's five fresh legs that Jim Laranega brings in. It includes Tynes, Cooper, Sullivan, Heinen, and Nixon. Sullivan a little bit too fresh on the open court. Dribble out of bounds play, but... This green team will come in and they're they're provide a blow. They're trying to wear down the opposition. 
extend the defense, create some foul situations that, you know, they can be a little bit more aggressive on the defensive end. Heinen picks up the foul as first. Freshman from Holland. And from the corner, three-pointer wouldn't go. And the putback by Juan Dixon. Averaging just over 18 points a game out of Baltimore. Led the ACC in steals per game at just over two and a half. Just has a knack for the basketball, whether he's in a still position or in a rebounding mode, a good rebounding guard. Sullivan, got about the three, pulls it back out. Heinen has a good look. Put the ball on the floor and took too, too many steps. Turnover. Now we looked at this, we looked at this region, James, and we came up with the fact we are the DC Invitational. Look at this from College Park, 11 miles of the White House. George Mason Fairfax is four. Of course, Georgetown plays tonight. Hampton also tonight. I mean, from here we're, we're over 2,000 miles. <laughs> they, 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 these teams uh, they traveled far. And we talked about it at the beginning of the show. You know, George Mason, they see the Maryland players all the time. They play with them. You know, during the summer, it's kind of like Duke and Carolina being eight miles apart and going to the same barbershop. These guys know each other and, and aren't afraid. Nixon to Heinen. 17 on the shot. Sullivan up high on the perimeter is Nixon. Nixon starting to find the basketball with some easy shots. His last two were three, one, typical Nixon. of his play. It's a rebound slasher. Fourteen and a half minutes left. Loose ball alongside that Maryland bench. You know, Craig, also, these players know that all their friends back in the D.C. area who they know in common are watching this game and a lot of bragging rights oh. in, the, in the area. You go to local restaurants and you see a player from an opposing team. Holding in, and now a whistle. Is Holden trying to make his break to the bucket? Taj Holden, a sophomore from Little Silver, New Jersey. And now a another substitution for Jim Laren Larenega. He'll bring his starting five back in. Nixon picked up the foul, his first. There's a look at George Evans. Green, green team theory as a foul was committed. We'll wait. So far, flow is not a word we can use for the start of this game. A lot of whistles. But getting back to the green team theory, that, that theory first started with my former coach, Coach Dean Smith, and he had a blue team. And ironically enough, it was before the shot clock. So he had a team that would come in and stay on the court for like three or four minutes without even taking a shot and provide some rest for his starters. And that was a the beginning of what he used to call the blue team. 12 on the shot clock. Herring feeds Evans. Turn around. Way off the mark. Didn't even hit iron. Well, a little bit farther out for Evans Lycan. He's usually five feet in with his back to the basket. One of his weaknesses is that his inability to go left doesn't have many weaknesses, but that's that's one of them. And his mid-range jumper, which we just saw. Terrence Morris back in for the Terrapins. He has it up high. Danny Miller also in, number 15. Nice feed, Swarm baseline. Defense. Dixon has a good look, kissed it off the window. Juan Dixon, three buckets, six points. Juan Dixon reminds me of another ACC player, Joseph Forte. They're very fluid, about the same body build, pure shooters. Whistle along the baseline, and don't miss a minute of action for live game updates. Go to March Mayhem's Tournament Live at the Internet's home of college basketball, cbs.sportsline.com or AOL, keyword CBS Sportsline. Evans, Laranega. Well, that's where Evans has problems. When he has to put it on the floor more than one or two times, he has has no moves to go to the basket. One, two dribbles. 
That's not his shot, but it goes down. Ooh, fall away. Got the bounce. Second bucket, shoots 61% from the floor. And usually he's able to outmuscle opponents. However, Maryland has Morris in the game and Lonnie Baxter, who's a, who's a big, strong kid himself, upper body strength. Dixon controls on the wing. Told him to have to go. Look, took the three short, Young up for the rebound. Here comes Tremaine Price. Good movement, Larinaga. Floats it in. Little head fake opened up the lane. Two buckets, four points. Well, it's typical of, of a coach's son. I mean, you're going to see all the, 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 the pump fakes, all the right fundamental moves. Doesn't really have all the athletic ability, but, you know, the coach's son. I mean, they coach's sons take a lot of heat. I know Saul Smith down in Kentucky, yeah. you know, takes a lot of heat. So they almost have to be, you know, fundamentally sound and not make a lot of mistakes. But they take a lot of heat. Well, look at the face of Gary Williams as Baxter picks up his second foul. Maryland trailing by six. Our game summary, 11.53 left, and George Mason leads by six. Turnovers, uncharacteristic for Maryland with eight. And this, James, don't forget, the third highest scoring offense in the country at just over 80, 85 points a game. Right now, they've got 10 on the board with 11.53 left in the first half. Not used to turning the ball over that often, and they're also 0 of 2. As we look at Lefty, he's got a special interest in this game. His Georgia State Panthers will take on the winner of this game. And, of course, Lefty Drizell coached at Maryland from 1970 to 1986. I played a, quite a few games against some of his teams with Albert King and Buck Williams. Ernest Graham, he had some awesome teams. Taj Holden, back in from Maryland, number 45. Herring will inbound. Laranega. Leaves it for Price. Ten on the shot clock. George Mason, another. Good executing team. They're not going to shoot the ball too quick. They're going to try to wear down the defense. Go inside to Evans. Good spin move. But a little bit out of control. He wasn't aware of the shot clock. you got to take a look once in a while how many seconds are left up there. We're either coming out of the timeout. You know, it has to be known how much time you have. Like timeouts. You only have one timeout. Oh, what have. a feed. What a look. Juan Dixon 15, Danny Miller. and Danny Miller threw it up and in out of Mount Holly, New Jersey. And, and when you have a, a prolific score like, like Dixon, he's much better as a passer early in the game, getting other people involved because he can score at will. He can do whatever he wants to. Look at this backdoor pass by Dixon. Good cut to the basket by Danny Miller, but if you're a scorer and you know you can score at will, it's always good to get other people involved first. Miller picks up the foul, and he'll take a seat as first. Mouton back in. Herring has it near side on the wing. They're really laying a body on Evans. Look how far out he's trying to post up. You have Baxter on him. Taha Holden. Under ten and a half left. Buckets tough to come by for the Terrapins. Oh, look for these little duck ins, just like that when They do a good job of slashing, and all of a sudden, someone a duck in for an easy bucket. Mouton missed the duck in. Alley oop. Evans got it up and in. Count it and the foul. Oh, what a pretty pass from Price. By George Evans. And I think that's what George Mason needs to do more of. They need to get the ball up the court early. That was a good set play, good spin move. That time Holden didn't have a body on Evans. And he was able to spin off for the alley-oop. But they need to get the ball up quickly and try to get a shot up before the defense gets set. And a whistle away from the ball. Under 10 minutes left, and it's a six-point George Mason lead. 
Jesse Young picks up the foul, his first. And the fifth team foul. Well, the senior Terrence Mars feels like he can post up inside. When he gets a low position, it's a nice little jump hook for him as well. Evans reached in. His second. Now, decision here if uh, Jim Laranega wants to keep his uh, score on the floor right now with 9.59 left. He's got the six points, and Laranega is going to gamble. Well, I think George, George Evans, uh, you know, we talked about his maturation process. He probably can play with, with a couple of fouls. That's good. Number 12, Drew Nichols. Nichols, he backs up at the guard spot. His first bucket out of Hempstead, New York. Well, Drew Nichols, he's, he's learning how to play the point guard position. He's not a true point guard. He can stroke the basketball if you give him some airspace. But learning how to be a point guard, and there is. You know who that looks like? I look like James, James Worthy. I like the footwork. I actually do. I mean, he knows the physics and the science of the game inside. He takes you one way, comes back to the other. But the soft jump hook over the top, I like that. I bet you do. Although I, I, I probably need a mini trampoline to duplicate that shot now. Holden was rejected. Price at 5'8". He's like a water bug trying to just slither his way through there back inside to go baseline Evans moves around Holden kicks to Young good movement by George Mason Young off the window and rolls in Jesse Young couple of buckets here out of Ontario Canada but the patience of Evans I mean he's not a player that's not going to force the issue he's going to take what's there his double team great dish pass for the layup to Jesse Young Right now, George Mason has Maryland in, into their style of game. They're up 22 to 14. Maryland's playing hard, but they aren't able to get into, you know, their, their key players, which, which is Dixon, Mari, some of the guys that can get the job done for them. alley -oop. And popping down the rim. That's good. Chris Wilcox. Chris Wilcox, a freshman out of Raleigh, North Carolina. And he's a beast. I tell you, he is physical inside. He's a little weight, only 210, but that will come. It'll come, but it hasn't taken away from his aggressive play. He just doesn't mind mixing it up inside. Over the top now when you're playing the man-to-man, -man, you got to watch out for the back door, and you got to keep a body on players who have leaping ability. You can't let them get behind you. Good recognition by Maryland. Good pass from Steve Blake over the top. Newton at the free throw line. One and one. Makes the first. Well, Tuesday on CBS, fighter jets are falling from the sky. Is it a government conspiracy or an act of terrorism? It's a jag you won't want to miss. Tuesday, only on CBS. Luton, a 78% free throw shooter, makes both. Well, up until the ACC tournament, Maryland was just on fire. They were averaging over 80 points. And as you see now, they pick up the defense. Need some help. Stepping out of bounds. Rob Anderson. Gary Williams not happy with the way George Mason has been able to control the tempo of the game. Starting a little full court pressure to try to dictate the tempo. And that's where Maryland is at their best because they're deep enough to bring players in to keep that type of defense up there. Tough pressure in defense. Dixon, little jump hook wouldn't go. Here comes George Mason. You know, you talk about uh, Gary Williams. He knows a lot about tempo. He played point guard at Maryland. Three-year starter back in 65, 66, and 67. Well, look at that defense on Price. To Nixon, free throw line. 17 on the shot clock. George Mason, a little bit confused now. The defense is tough, but they go to their bread and butter guy. Evans backs in, gets the bounce, and falls down. 
Or you, or you got no meat in the kitchen, you go to your bread and butter. <laughs> And that's George Evans, and I'm just, I love that jump hook. It's kind of like a, a shot put kind of a shot. It's not really a, a jump hook. He kind of pushes it up. That's just all, all good touch and feel by the 30-year-old veteran. Mardusic picked up his first foul. Three-point try for Evans. And George Evans with 11 first-half points, 7.22 left. George Mason leading Maryland 25-18. You won't see him coming. You won't know he's there. And if you do, it's all. Gary Williams used to have a superstition about eating turkey sandwiches before every single game. It didn't work, so he changed it. Now he wears lucky ties. So far, it's not working. You know what? He may want to change at halftime. <laughs> the way things are going right now, down 25-18. He says it stays in his closet as long as it wins. But I hate to have to depend on a necktie. That's why I never really, uh, I never really had any superstitions. And well, he can wear all sorts of different ties because, of course, Maryland's got four different colors in that scheme. Little fadeaway shot wouldn't go. Here comes George Mason trying to push tempo as Price. And notice the defensive rebounding by George Mason. They get all five guys in there because they know it's important to make a collective effort against a, a bigger Maryland team. Herring right back to him. We're going to go into Evans. Look at the jump hook here. Running hook that time. Wouldn't get the bounce. Rebound goes to Maryland. Blake. Side Wilcox, nice whip pass to Mouton. Excellent ball movement by Mel on that time. Guys had shots, but they made the extra pass inside. Herring picks up the foul is first. Two shots for Mouton. Baxter checks back in for Maryland. And James, so far, it's been a drought for their two big scores of Baxter and Morris. No points. 0 for 1 from the floor. Six twenty-eight left first half here in Boise, Idaho. George Mason on top of Maryland by a score of 25-20. And as you mentioned earlier, so far, Maryland has not been able to get Baxter and Morris off. Dixon's hit some shots, but he's not been a, a, a big factor. George Mason has come in and put their tempo into gear. Offensive problem for the Terrapins. Price at 5'8", pushes that shot up and in. But George Mason's one of those teams. George Mason's one of those teams, Craig, that they don't mind running. They'll run when the opportunity is there, but they will try to lure you into somewhat of a slowdown game as well. Oh, nice baseline move. Blake ran it up and in. Steve Blake with six points. Dixon hasn't touched the ball much over the last six to seven minutes. Not much, but that was a good drive by Blake. They're always looking for Blake to pass. He, he led the league in assists with six. Herring high off the glass. Luton, his first bucket, six points. Maryland's starting to pick up the tempo a little bit. They're starting to be a little bit more aggressive on the offensive end going to the basket. Meanwhile, George Mason will be looking for Evans inside. Price backs it out. And now a timeout. George Mason. Timeout. 5.22 left.
George Mason, the 14th seed in the West, leading the third seed. Maryland Terrapins by four with 522 remaining here in Boise, Idaho. We saw a, uh, an upset as Lefty Drizel and Georgia State took the opening game against Wisconsin. Georgia State poured it on in the second half and they went to a triangle and two offense and shut down Kurt Penny, one of the top shooters for Wisconsin. Bryce misses a three at the shot clock buzzer. Coming up on the five minute mark left in the first half. I think this game, George Mason against Maryland, may be a game of endurance. George Mason can hang around if they can keep the tempo at their pace. But Maryland is going to continue to attack. And in the second half, last seven or eight minutes is when you expect George Mason to show signs of fatigue. Not this young man. Oh, Evans, top shot, oh, double head fake, and he throws in his 13th point. With, with George Evans, I mean, he's not flashy. He's not a pretty game. He's got his big, long black socks on. Looks like my father with those black socks <laughs> Looks on. Looks like he's on vacation. Exactly. Looks like he has shorts on with dress <laughs> shoes and those long black socks. You know, with your grandfather. But 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 his game is strong. He's very solid. He's not going to do anything he can't do. Positions himself. Good pump fake. I kind of like his game. Evans with 13 points, averaging just under 19 a game. Yeah. Well, you're right. That does look like someone's that looks dad's like grandpa uh, <laughs> sitting on the porch on a Sunday afternoon with a big glass of tea, with his dress shoes on, <laughs> and some Bermuda shorts. <laughs> Gotta love it. Evans at the line, 13 points, three rebounds, three assists. All around, strong first half for Evans. I mean, talking to Coach Larnaga yesterday, he was saying when Evans came to, to George Mason, he didn't want to be treated differently. He said, I want a room with a, with a regular student, a room with a freshman player. And he gets those guys up at 5.30. These guys have 8 o'clock classes, and they think they're going to sleep for 7.15. Not with Evans. He's up at 5.30, cooking breakfast. Yeah, he says you've got to have, yeah, you gotta have breakfast and make your bed. <laughs> and, and, and I can't tell you how important that is. And, and, and you know, it makes the coach's job a lot easier when you have a player like that who's kind of monitoring guys constructively. Evans takes a rest. Blake takes the inbound for Maryland. Coming up on four minutes left in the first half. Nichols, Mouton, lost the handle, picks it up, still loose on the deck. George Mason has it, back to Blake. Good collective effort on the defense, but only 10 on the shot clock. Inside, Mouton. That's Maryland, ain't gonna keep coming at you like waves. Under four minutes remaining, 31-26, George Mason. George Mason be very happy to go in at halftime, a little lead or top. Oh. Never understood that shot. That only supposed to happen on the playground. Yeah, uh, got stuck. We'll take a break. Timeout. 3:47 to go in the first half. And coming up on the singular at the half, two of the busiest men in the business, Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, will get you updated on scores, highlights, plus live look-ins around this NCAA tournament. That's all coming up on singular at the half. George Mason going with the semi-version of the green team. Well, they can mix it up. Yeah, they mix it up with different starters and bench players as well. Turnover. They whistled uh, traveling on Jesse Young. The defense of Maryland is starting to dictate what George Mason does. They were very relaxed early. Evans was getting the ball inside, and he's still productive. But for the rest of the players, the defense is causing George Mason to kind of hurry up things a little bit in the last two minutes here. Lost the handle, Herring. Two on one with Heinen. Give it up. Had it, lost it. Young follows. Is in. No transition defense there. George Mason should have been able to get two looks at the bucket. Gary Williams making a substitution. He saw something he didn't like in the transition defense. Nichols, floater, short. Boy, working both ends right now. Jesse Young, a sophomore. A lot of international experience. Played for the Canadian Junior National Team and beat up uh, on the U.S., the Team USA in the Junior World Championships with 23 points, 10 boards. He can get the job done. The only thing that 
concerns is in physical games, he has a tendency to get a little soft sometimes. Block the shot of Nichols. And Nichols is looking to pass that one. Heinen. Anderson up top to Herring. Two and a half minutes to go. First half. Look to Iso. Herring on the wing. Anderson spots up. Will Cox. Last touch by Maryland. All made possible of the effort of Jesse Young. That ball belonged to Will Cox, but Young got a hand on it, deflected it off Will Cox's hand. Good effort on Jesse Young. Juan Dixon is back in for Maryland. Price working against Blake. Floater. Larinaga working hard on the baseline and a whistle. Well, they got Larinaga with the push off. Now on Chris Wilcox. First Actually first on Wilcox. So Chris Wilcox picks up the foul. Timeout, Maryland. And a timeout. And Gary Williams not happy. 33-26, George Mason. Saturday on CBS, a sting operation exposes police corruption. Now the toughest fight against crime is between the cops themselves. Don't miss Craig T. Nelson in the district. That's Saturday here on CBS. George Evans with 14 points for George Mason. Mouton with eight for Maryland. Dixon and Blake in the backcourt with six apiece for the Terrapins. And at the free throw line is Larinaga. You know, going back to playing for dad. You know, Jim Larinaga, the head coach, told us he thinks it's tougher on the son maybe than, than, than the father because he hears, the son hears more criticism. Exactly. Fans, students around, and you have to kind of just let that slide off the back. And, and I've got to tell you, historically, that's been a, a major obstacle for players to, to overcome when you're playing for your father. Because everyone expects that you're yeah. getting double, double standard. They look, you know, favoritism. And not the case here. Strong move by Holden, his first bucket. Maryland climbs back to within six. Coming to jump hook, maybe. Lost it down the baseline. Turnover by Cooper. Minute 30 remaining. Blake literally nearly lost it. Kicks it back outside. In the corner. Three-pointer away. No. Saved by George Mason. That was Eric Herring. Right now, I think Maryland has got to set some set plays or either let Juan Dixon handle the basketball because he's a player in the NCAA tournament when there's single game elimination. You don't want to have to wait for your star player. You want to get him involved early. So I think they got to, they want to pull away from George Mason. They got to start looking for their star player in Dixon. Blake picks up the foul as second. 58 seconds remain here in Boise first half West region George Mason in Maryland the Terrapins the third seed in the West George Mason the 14th seed don't forget James Maryland 11th ranked in both polls 11th ranked that's you know they played well all season they've been higher ranked early in the year they took a little slide but trust me this is a team that not too many other teams want to see Sullivan checks in for George Mason. Out goes Herring. Price with another. Tremaine Price with six points in his first half. 36-28. And for George Mason, mission accomplished in the first half. I know they didn't expect to be up. They would have gone in, you know, down seven or, or eight and been happy, but they're up 36-28 and, and, and are in control of this ball game. Loose Defense. ball, loose ball. Price had it, kicked it out of bounds. 16 on the shot clock. The referees discussing whether or not the new shot clock. No possession. 
Shot clock stayed at 16. Now Dixon fires up a three. Short follows his miss, banks it and hits. Dixon. Eight points in the first half. Just a sign of a, of, a, of a pure shooter. He knew that shot was going to be a little short when he left his hand, followed it right up. Price to Sullivan. Way off the mark. Now, last touch by the Terrapins. Eric Herring into the lineup for the Patriots. Larinaga looks cool and calm, not the story on the other sideline. Gary Williams has been marching up and down. If Gary Williams knows if you give a team confidence, now George Mason's going to go in at halftime feeling really confident coming out in the second half. Dixon behind the back. The buzzer! Oh, what a shot! We had one of those in our first game. One Dixon from half court. Lights out. Actually about three steps in. It's a beauty right on the money. And let's go down now to Bob Wenzel. Bob. Thank you, Craig. Jim, great first half. You established Evans, and then defensively you kept their big guys out of it. Well, we have to take away that inside game because they're so powerful inside, Bob. But Juan Dixon has hurt us. He's had a great first half. The shot at the buzzer can be a deflating experience. What are you going to tell your team at halftime? That's one shot out of a lot of shots. Some go in, some don't. That gives them some momentum. That gives them something to build on. But we got to come back and play 20 more minutes. 20 minutes, first half is not enough. Thanks a lot, Jim. See you after the game. Thank you. Only the fifth time Maryland has trailed at the half. George Mason, 36, Maryland, 33. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBA Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that believes in the value of self-expression. Welcome everyone to our studios here in New York. Singular at the half, Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg. At halftime, George Mason with a three-point lead on Maryland. But that play by Juan Dixon at the end of the first half is the kind that can ignite a team. It certainly can. Georgia State knocked down a three to end their first half, came back to beat Wisconsin by one. Maryland seemed to be in a little bit of a hurry in the first half. If they just settle down, I think they'll be able to handle George Mason in the last 20 minutes. All right, Clark. Meanwhile, it's shaping up to be a bad day for the Big Ten. They've already lost twice. Iowa led by two at halftime, but they trail Creighton 45-34 in Uniondale. Let's take you there now. East Region action. Gus Johnson and Dan Bonner. 13.46 to go. Second half of play. Creighton shocking Iowa right now on top 45 to 37. And Iowa getting its points, particularly in the second half, from odd sort of places. Henderson now has two threes in the game. He came in with only eight on the season. Walker to Corver again. And the rebound goes to Worley. Now Oliver spinning, the runner can't stay down. Pyfram with the rebound. Oliver, I think, trying to do a little too much by himself. Pyfram now has five rebounds in the game, and Creighton rotates those three guys in the post. Pyfram is part of that three-headed monster in there, and the post players have really given Dana Altman's team a lift today. Corver popping out on the wing, knocked away. Worley saves it right into the hands of Corver. Warren Corver throws it away again. Here come the Hawkeyes with numbers. Oliver down the lane, count it and the foul. Creighton is a team that likes to create the turnovers, but they just turned it over twice in a row, and Oliver just takes it all the way to the basket. Gus, it looks like he's decided that it's time to put this team on his shoulders and carry him. 12 points for Oliver. And the game summary. Jays 5 of 15 from downtown. Both teams have been good with the basketball, not turning it over. Of course, the purpose of pressure and the kind of pressure that Creighton exerts is not necessarily just to turn you over, but to get your offense going a little bit faster than you want to play. And they've certainly forced Iowa to do that today.
45-40, Creighton. The Iowa fans rise to their feet here at the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York. Taylor across the lane, the runner rims out. Henderson with the rebound, kicks it out to Oliver. On the move to the bucket, hanging in the air. Rebound inside and a foul. I tell you what, the senior is really starting to play some serious ball. We, didn't we just see this? Oliver just takes the ball, takes it the length of the court, drives all the way to the basket. He's looking for the foul there, but then he goes after the rebound and draws the foul. Lindemann picks up the foul. The offensive rebounder on this team is supposed to be Reggie Evans, but Evans has struggled today, so Oliver's taken over. Oliver claiming he was shooting the ball. Anyway, anyway they get it back. And Oliver's a little greedy, Gus. I think he wanted points on the court. Partially blocked by Huss. Here's Smith. Steps back. Now Worley. Drop step to the hole. Count it. And the foul. With Reggie Evans on the bench. So the Iowa Hawkeyes begin to mount a strong comeback. They have now closed to within three of the Creighton Blue Jays, 45 to 42. Meanwhile, West Region action in San Diego. St. Joe's with a 48-39 lead on the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech. Let's take you there live and join Dick Enberg and Bill Walton. Right now on the Hawks from St. Joe's. Here in San Diego, St. Joseph's leading 48-39, but Georgia Tech putting on a run in the second half. The Yellow Jackets were down by 17 at the intermission, have pulled within 48-41. Paul Hewitt never complains, never gripes about officiating calls that go against his squad, never gets down on his teams, always so positive, so reinforcing. Nelson's pass intercepted by Alvin Jones of Georgia Tech. A long kick ahead pass by Aikens has been effective today. Aikens saying uh, to his big man Jones, you made a good play at the other end. Hurry up and help us back here. A lot of time on the shot clock. One of the few times we've had a chance to take our breath this afternoon. I don't think the shot clock has gotten under 15 the entire <laughs> game until this possession. Nice pass. And Alvin Jones able to flush it at 48-43. But Daryl LeBerry, the senior from Decatur, Georgia, transferred from Florida A&M, really starting to make things happen. I like the hair, too, for Daryl LeBerry. I didn't see it. Wish I had more hair. Nelson inside. And the big center, Sazanov, unable to connect, but was fouled. The, the, the previous play for Georgia Tech. The high screen, and then Alvin Witt Jones slides in behind, over the top pass. The Yellow Jackets. But that's the good news. Back. Yeah, but that's the good news. The bad news is Alvin Jones has just picked up his fourth personal foul. The only big uh, man on that Georgia Tech squad, and uh, that force is a tough call for Paul Hewitt. St. Joseph with a 49-43 lead under 11 and a half to play in the second half. One other game in the East region. Greensboro at halftime. Hofstra with a 33-29 lead on UCLA. Here's UCLA's Dan Gadzurek. Watch the grab and the throw down. And the Bruins with a six-point lead early. And Hofstra ties it up at nine. Rick Apodaca from downtown. Watch the give and go here. Earl Watson, six out of six from the floor in the first half. Converts on the reverse there. Hofstra made seven of 14 threes from in the first half. There is Jason Hernandez with one of those seven, and they lead by four. There is your halftime score just underway now in the second half. And we will send you back to the second half of George Mason and Maryland in Boise after this. Singular at the half has been sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that believes in the value of self-expression. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by the United States Army, Sprint PCS, Recreational Boating and Fishing Foundation, and by United Airlines. 
And a three-point lead for George Mason at the half. Craig Bullerjack back along with James Worthy. George Evans did what he thought he could do, and that was just lead this uh, George Mason team, and he comes up with 14 points at the half. He did it all. He did it inside. Not a pretty game, but he doesn't go outside of his game. Good footwork inside with nice jump hooks. He's been good on the board as well. James, let's take a look real quick at our first half numbers in this game here in Boise. Second game of four here this afternoon. And you look at uh, turnovers even. Evans, six of nine from the floor. And Dixon's led the way for Maryland with 11. Well, Maryland's got to get some offense out of Terrace Morris and Lonnie Baxter. Those two guys together average 27 points. Today, they have Zippo. Lonnie Baxter has been taken out of the game because he's had to defend George Evans, but Morris is a guy that's got to put some points on the board, and Young is playing very physical against Morris. So those are the two guys that need to get, get it going. First shot away from Dixon, and a whistle. By the way, of the five times that Maryland has trailed at the half, they've only rallied once to come back to win, and that was at Duke. Missing Terps indeed. Baxter had some foul problems on the bench a lot with the three. Morris didn't take a shot. And as you mentioned, they combined for 27 points. Well, we talked about Lonnie Baxter and he happened to guard Evans. Terrence Morris has been pushed around by Jesse Young, and he hasn't really, you know, established himself in the ballgame aggressively. He's got to get some offensive rebounds. He's got to do some things other than look for his shot because they need his point production here in the second half. Terrence Morris on the board. Third team all ACC. Durable player 132 consecutive games he's put on the Terrapin uniform. It's a one point game 36 35. Blake picks up Price with the pressure and jump ball. Mouton and Price. And the possession arrow going to George Mason. Well, Maryland realizes that they were low into George Mason's game. Now they're going to try to pick up the tempo with some full court pressure. I talked about enduring through that type of style of play. It'll be interesting to see how George Mason pans out with the added pressure to Maryland. Young on the wing. The Herring. Good move. Little step. Too strong off the back of the iron. Three on one. Maryland gives it off. Mouton rolls it in. Mouton had eight points in the first 20 minutes. Now in double figures with 10. And the first lead for Maryland today at 37 36. And they thrive on that. Look at Blake going over with the stingy defense. Blind from behind defense. But they go inside to Evans. He'll look for a good pass. Good pass. Young. And that breaks a 9-0 run by Maryland. And look at Evans. He's saying, calm down. He's going over to coach. Talk to Coach Larry Negger. He is the coach on the floor, but the passing exceptional. And this is what I like about Evans. He won't try to force the issue. Two great passes, one from Evans and one from Price to Young. He's shooting, trying to make a three-point play. Was in and came back out. The foul was whistled on Morris, his first. We saw a battle here as we start the early minutes of the second half, 38-37, George Mason. Maryland will retain possession with 27 on the shot clock. And what happens when one of your scores is not involved? Sometimes you try to work a little too hard trying to get him the basketball. Now they're going to start looking for backs to the side, and I'm afraid they might try to force the issue. That time they had Terrence Morris and Baxter yeah. on the same post. So you can see these two guys are, are, are a little bit concerned about the fact that they haven't made a contribution yet. A little bit out of sync, Baxter and Morris. You know, James, Maryland does it by teamwork. They, uh, they lead the ACC in assists at 20. They only had five in the first half. And Blake is the uh, ACC assist leader. Dixon is the ACC steals leader. They do it by by team, teamwork. Yeah, a good collective effort. Gary Williams believes in that. And he does a good job of preparing his ball club. He has a great player in Dixon. Dixon picked up his second foul as Herring makes the free throw. Our tournament summary, Big 10-0-2, victim of two upsets. 
How about Utah State? Knock it off Ohio State. Stu Morrill and the Aggies getting it done. Long baseball pass. Knocked away. Get out of here. Price gives it up. Evans lost the handle. Back to Maryland. Another pass to Mouton. Now this is the pace that Maryland would try to put in the second half. They're going to try to get up and down the floor. It's a great block by Herring, but Maryland just continues to come at you. It's Mouton. He's not giving up, keeping control of the basketball. Shooting one. We're tied at 40. Maryland going to a little zone now to try to change the look. Go to the zone, try to control Evans inside. It would be a bit surprised as soon as Evans touches to get double, triple teams, but answers back with the three. Hitting 40% from behind the arc. Three-year start. He's very active, very athletic. They needed a big bucket from here and there. Nine points in this game. Back the other way. Watch out if Juan Dixon gets a stroke. So smooth coming off that down pick. He's now had double figures, James. 30 of 32 games this season. Remarkable. He's had two 30-point games, once against Wake Forest, the other against NC State. Evans! They left it for him on the numbers and up and, go, and up and in. Well, Maryland gone to the zone, and when you're in the zone, there's always going to be a split second where an area or gap is open. Good touch pass by George Mason inside to Evans. Patriots by three. They want to work Baxter over there. Baxter. The last possession. Now watch the pick. For you young players, when you set the little pick, look at Blake going out and a good little spin move. When you set a pick, usually you're going to get open. Oh, nice inbounds pass. And up high was Wilcox to throw it down. 45-44, George Mason. Larinaga looking for cutters to Young up top. Price, they lob it low. Draws the double team. Hanging on that pivot foot. Tip in, wouldn't go. Young, rebounds. Still has it. Counted. Foul. I tell you. Jesse Young has been the unsung hero here. Evans is having a great game, but Young has done a good job on Terrence Morris in the defensive end, and he's been extremely active on the boards. That was one of the first times I've ever seen Evans force a shot inside. But Young on the offensive glass, very active. 68% free throw shooter, makes it a three-point play. Young with 11, his season average just over eight. Young has been known to be too thin and a little soft, but he's, everything changes in the NCAA tournament. I, I really believe that. There's no tomorrow. It's called pressure. <laughs> Loose ball, Mouton. Look at the hustle. Laren Nega trying to get back. Ooh, bodies down. Mouton hits hard. Well, it was an awesome display of ball handling. Then Laren Nega coming in trying to take away the layup. A hard foul. And Price is down at midcourt. third personal team foul three. That was the hard foul by Larinaga there. But Price at half court now, he was going for the pass, came down, kind of hyperextended that left leg a little bit as you see him holding on to it. Could be a little cramp in there. Yeah, he's holding the back of the calf, yeah. which is what you hope is just a cramp. Bob Anderson is checking in for George Well, the Mason. tempo in this half, furious. It's picked up a little bit. Maryland has done a good job of picking up the defense. They want that type of tempo, but George Mason has done a good job of executing their half-court offense. And Jesse Young has been very active 
in this ballgame. Price, 5'8, 150. Yeah, it's a calf. Yeah, we all know that uh, that stretchy position right there. Mouton will go to the free throw line. 78% shooter. Makes the first. Well, Monday on CBS, what's worse than an annoying father-in-law? Losing your annoying father-in-law. The Manhattan begins on an all-new King of Queens. Check it out Monday right here on CBS. There's a four-court pressure. Maryland's still not satisfied with being down two. They're going to continue this pressure. Heinen gets it up top to Young. Not trying to slow it down. A bit is Herring. Pressure handled well by George Mason. They don't panic. Nice. Good entry. Good entry. Lob with the other side. Got the roll as Evans. What a team for a, George Evans. What a great seal job by, by George Evans. And that's very difficult to do when you get somebody on your back to hold that position for three or four seconds and a great floating pass over the top and a finish by Evans. Alley oop. Popping the rim. Baxter. And his first bucket, and it comes at the 15-29 mark. Backcourt pressure by the Terrapins. And riding his hip was Blake. Didn't like the call. Well, one thing that Heinen did is he continued to attack. You don't want to hesitate against pressure. You want to go against it. And a timeout. Two-point game in Boise. Two-point game, George Mason leading Maryland, the third seed in the West, 15-19 remaining. And the two players, James, we highlighted to start this game during the job, Evans with 18 and Dixon with 13 for Maryland. Yeah, it's kind of hard to hold down your star players. There's, there's a five-second violation called on Eric Herring. Couldn't get it in. Good defense uh, by Maryland, but Dixon and Evans are two stars that are, in most cases, they're going to find ways to, to get their game going. Just love those socks on you know, George Evans. Man. I can't get enough of that. <laughs> Tomorrow's an off day. I'm sure we can we can find a pair. Let's see if I can get a pair of those from here. Inside, tough pass. Dixon counted. Oh, that's thread the needle. Nichols, Nichols with a great throw in to Dixon. That's just great execution. They set it up by the decoy of the lob to Baxter, and then. Dixon just slips right in. Simultaneously, Baxter going back door. They had to recognize that. And Dixon moving well without the basketball into the eight foot territory for a nice little jumper. 16 point game, had 11 in the first half. Backboard pressure on Maryland. You know, Maryland's had some tough losses. I mean, two against Duke. They're not going to wear down, they're going to be in the game for 40 minutes. Herring missed the three. Maryland trying to pick up tempo. Dixon, floater, wouldn't go, put back, wouldn't go, but the third time's the charm. Absolutely, and that's what you have to do. You have to get on the boards offensively against George Mason. They only have one guy in Evans that can Time compete on reason. the board. Maryland has taken the three-point lead. Wilcox, the freshman now with six points, 14-38 left. James, you know this, three points in basketball is nothing, but it's Maryland's largest lead of the day. I mean, that's how tight this game has been. George Mason with a strong first half. They led by three at the half, and now it's Maryland by three. Yeah, three points is uh, 
you know, not a big lead. And, and Coach Larry Niagara recognizes that he doesn't want it to get any more than three. Evans fed him out to Price, who we understand a cramp, and he's still trying to work it out. He was stretching on the sideline, but now back in, and didn't have a lot of uh, a lot of legs on that shot. Well, no, he's got a he's got a strong little body there, and and when you pull a little cramp like that, it it goes away. That you know the the major pain, but it never really you know completely goes away. You always can feel a little something in in your jumping, particularly when you're jumping. Evans directs traffic to Herring. Young sets the pick. George Evans draws a double team. That'll be a pass out of the post. Price, a little bounce pass. Tough inside and a whistle as the shot by Liranega wouldn't go down. So fundamentally sound. Took his time. You know, demonstrates the pump fakes when he gets inside amongst the Giants. Arnega, savvy player, typical of a coach's son. And typical for a coach's son, son pretty good free throw shooter at 73%. Third foul on Wilcox, who's played well off the bench. Misses the first. Ball put up Mouton having a game 17 points and the lead now for Maryland is five well they sped up the game in the last five minutes here and the defense has dictated that they're swarming now on defense and really forcing George Mason to oh, 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 oh. Oh, that shut me up very fast there you had to watch that. Herring now in double figures with 11 with the baseline reverse spinner. Couple guys that like that style of game. Herring is one of them. Price can play the fast tempo game, but other than that, they're not going to have a lot of guys that can match and compete with Maryland. Nice Get inside speed. pass. Inside. Evans was able to maybe intimidate that shot. And Wilcox had a good look but missed. Well, Wilcox knew Evans was there and he got a hand up and kind of altered the shot a little bit. Four fouls on Wilcox. But the entry pass inside from Dixon was, was, a, was a pretty good one. They're looking over the top to both Baxter and Wilcox. Look at Herring going up and under. You can't teach that. No. No. That kind of thing just <laughs> happens. You can't teach that. Those are the gifts given. Larenega. And it's amazing. So many guys in basketball can get airborne. And they just kind of kick their legs a little bit as if they're wings. And they seem to be able to hang there for a little bit. Aaron demonstrating just that. Seven points for Larinaga, and now George Mason, 11 of 17 from the free throw line. Maryland is uh, yet to miss from the strike. 10 of 10. Terrapins by one. 13 minutes left. Miller in. Holden to Dixon. Good look, missed it. Nichols chases it down in the corner. Ooh, a little tangled up there. Evans and Holden comes in, pushing bodies away. And the guys in stripes finally come in to separate green and white. Well, I'm looking at Drew Nichols. He looks every bit of 155, 160. He better be careful going up against Lieutenant Evans, 30 year old Army. There's the drive, hard foul. And Evans actually trying to hold him up. And Drew Nichols, he's only a sophomore. He's a little young. Herring mm -hmm. steps in to be peacemaker. Price uh, whistle for the foul, his second. Can't tell you what a big and, and, and good timeout that was by Coach Larry Nagel when they were down. 
three points to Maryland because it settled them back down and it disallowed the momentum of Maryland to continue. They had a good, good roll going, a good string of points there, and the timeout kind of slowed them down. George Mason still only down by three. Back to Price in the corner. See, they can beat the pressure by Maryland if they continue to move the ball. It's when it starts to stick in your hands is when you have a problem. Oh, Three-pointer finds a bottom of the net. Anderson. Rob Anderson, his first bucket out of Arlington, Virginia. He didn't touch it. They called goaltending. It was an air ball shot. Evans went up for the block, but I don't really think he got a hand on the ball. It was short anyway. From the basket view, there's Nichols on the release. Now the ball, well, I don't know. Could have got a fingernail on there, but it didn't look like it was touched from where I was sitting, but I'm not a referee. I thought the ball did move. You ate your carrots. Yeah, got the 2010s. Is that right? <laughs> Is that better than 2020? <laughs> Price thought about the three, puts it back on the floor, drives in traffic, gives it off to Evans. There's got to be a pass out of the post. In trouble, double teams, kicks it to the corner, and a three-pointer again, back-to-back -back threes by Anderson. And Anderson has been struggling. He's only been shooting 31% from the field and 25 from behind the arc, so it's a pleasant welcome to see Rob Anderson knocking down two shots in a row. Beat it out to the corner, and the hot hand of Anderson finds the three. You can access live stats from every tournament game with the CBS Sports interactive coverage of Ultimate Television. Got a pretty ultimate game right here. 11-32 remaining. George Mason. 60, Maryland 59. Shot rejected, loose ball picked up. Nichols. Blocking foul in the lane on Evans. Started out with a great defensive play by Evans, a great shot that was blocked by Evans. And then he gets underneath Nichols just a little bit for the blocking foul. There is the block by Evans, a strong move. Nichols gets the rebound. And Evans was going to initially try to go up and block the shot. Instead held his ground. Call for the block. Nichols very active to the basketball on the loose ball there. Third personal foul on Evans. Now the uh, referees having a conference at the scorer's table. The basket is good by Nicholas, and then a foul after the shot on Nicholas. So the guys uh, confer. And it's Drew Nicholas's first personal team foul eight. So a foul after the bucket by on Nichols. Oh, that's pretty bizarre. I, and I, now Evans is going to toe the line. I, I think that might be the first time that I've, I've ever seen a call like that. Usually it's a no call. Initially, referee called the block. Nichols makes the shot, comes down, and, and I really didn't understand the foul. Nevertheless, Evans is at the free throw, converting two. It's the 20 point mark. Took too, too many steps. One point game. Let's check in with Bob Wenzel. Bob? Well, on the charge call, James, what happened was the guy stepped in, the shot was taken, and the guy stepped in before. So it was a charge. You don't see it very often. Usually in 
in uh, referee school, they <laughs> call that one off. I was going to say, and I didn't see it too many times, Bob. Thank you. I got the horn went off accidentally on the scorer side. And now George Mason will inbounds. Harry. Feeds inside to Evans. That'll be a pass and the double team's coming. Finds Price Excellent. wide open. Excellent. With a scoop shot in. Him. I gotta tell you, George Evans becoming an assist man now, and that's a good offensive strategy. You know they're gonna double and triple team. If he looks to be a passer, they can get those cuts and slices for the rest of the game here. Well, that's a tough chore right there. The big fella trying to dribble down court holding. And a timeout. timeout. Gary Williams. Emotional, intense. George Mason by three. You won't see him coming. You won't know he's there. And if you do, it's already too late. Joseph Fiennes, Jude Law, Rachel Weiss, and Ed Harris. If you kill him, you can win the war for us. Enemy at the Gates, rated R. Friday, March 16th, everywhere. 64 61. George Mason, 10-51 remaining. You know, the Terrapins lost three of their first four to start the season and then finished off. Well, then they won 10 straight and got back on track. Coming off that loss to Duke in the ACC semifinals by a bucket. That took a lot of juice out of this Maryland team when they were up 10 with 54 seconds left in the ball game and allowed Duke to come back. 10-31 left in Boise. George Mason, 14th seed against Maryland, the third seed in the West. Gary Williams very unhappy with his team's performance right now, particularly on the defensive end. They're going down the double team on Evans every time, but the weak side defense is not rotating over. They're not making the shift over to take away the cutter. The last time, Tremaine Price was able to easily walk down the lane for a layup. And on the offensive end, not recognizing the clock and getting the shot off, that is not typical of a Gary Williams ball club. George Mason led by three at the half. Maryland battled back to take the lead, and then George Mason has George regained Mason. it. Evans has led the way with 20. Mouton 17 for the Terrapins. A timeout in Boise, 10-13 remaining. George Mason by three. I hate thinking about money. So now that my paintings are starting to sell, I'm planning to put mine with Fidelity Investments. We have something called the Fidelity Funds Manager Program. Basically, they'll manage a portfolio of mutual funds for me. It's according to my goals. It'll be like autopilot for my investments. If I'm going to let anyone manage my portfolio of mutual funds, it's going to be Fidelity. Leave all the work and the worry to us. Let the people who know what they're doing do it. Fidelity Funds Manager Program. To invest, call, click, or visit Fidelity. Patriots lead Maryland by three. CBS Sports Line stat of the game turnovers by half, both with 11 in that first 20 minutes. And they've taken care of the ball much better. Maryland with four, George Mason with three. For complete game coverage, go to cbs.sportsline.com. Little ISO move with George Evans. Now he's starting to face the basket, so he can see the double team. That time he was able to take a baseline and, and he got fouled. Baxter picks up his fourth, and he'll have to take a seat with just two points. Been a very difficult day. The inside muscle player for Gary Williams, averaging uh, 15 and a half points a game, sits with two. Evans at the free throw line. And the difference being, I mean, you look at Lonnie Baxter. He's, he's a little bit bigger than, than Evans, a little bit stronger, but you're up against a 30-year-old man who has a few tricks up his sleeve, and I think that's been the difference in that matchup. 22 points for Evans. Herring got a hand on it, hustles, and jumps the bench. Out of bounds, Maryland ball. See, Maryland has given George Mason 
the confidence. They they made them think that, hey, we're in this ball game. We're up five. We didn't expect to, you know, to be up. We expect to be playing from behind. Now they're thinking we can win this game. Maryland, on the other hand, struggling to find some versatility in their offense. They haven't had Baxter. Morris, I don't think, has even attempted a shot. They feed it to Morris and a whistle. 22 minutes on the floor, two points. That came from the free throw line, James. Exactly. He has not taken a shot. Yeah, I got to ask you, how how does a player who averages nearly 13 a game, he's 6'9", got a body at 221, can't find a way to get a ball, you know, get a shot away? During regular season, you can produce, but when you get to, you know, a team you haven't seen, you get to the NCAA, it's a, it's a big difference, and you have to be able to do other things. If the shot has not come to Morris and he's still waiting for the shot, you got to go out and get some offensive rebounds. At his height, he should be all over the offensive glass, blocking some shots, doing other things. That gets you back into the ball game. You never want to see a player like Morris not getting any shots. Four points all from the free throw line. They're going to put pressure on Laren, Larenega. And a lot of that is, is on Morris. It's not. Not the offense. It's not really George Mason, although they're playing good defense. He's got to get on the offensive boards and make some things happen. Nearly taken away by Holden, and the big train was coming right at us. I didn't flinch. You did. Yeah, of course I did. <laughs> You're a football player. Former oh. football player. You can take that pound. Oh, my. Loose ball. Young lost it. Picks it back up. Comes to jump hook. Evans, soft, a little strong. Coming back the other way. Well, Maryland's running that, that run and jump defense, and they're getting the traps high at the half court, and George Mason is not able to get into their offense right now. Blake able to push it up the court, hits the jumper. Maryland's playing their game right now. A lot of people might think that the shot Blake just took, not a good shot, but it was within his game. He dribbled up to the free throw line almost, knocked down a little 10-footer. Price, the foul. The bucket counts, and Blake at the free throw line. And on Miami Lakes, Florida, only a sophomore, seven assists. Evans the rebound. One point game. George Mason, Maryland. It's been a battle from start. From the start. 11th ranked in the country, the Terrapins, and the third seed in the West. George Mason came in at the 14th seed. Herring on the drive. Takes it to the line. They want a goaltending, no call. Here comes Maryland. Looked like that ball might have been on the glass. Before Terrapins. the shot was blocked. Down one, block on the other end. Back to Morris. Blake near side. Crossover dribble in the lane. Pull up jumper. Good. Blake trying to do a little instant offense for Maryland. Ten points and double figures. Well, he's always under control. He's an assist guy, but very under control. And if you let him get four feet, five feet, he can pull up for that little shot. Eighth lead change of the day. Maryland by one. Just over eight minutes left. Evans. Oh, when he faces the basket, it's a whole nother ball game. Oh, what a sweet roll. 24. And what a smart recognition that there were double team in Evans as long as he had his back to the bucket. But as soon as he faces the opposition, he can see the defense. It's a different ball game as Mouton knocks it down. Mouton, 18. Transfer out of Tulane, set out last year, shoots 51% from the floor, and he's had himself a had himself a game, more than doubling his season average. Number one, Byron Mouton, third personal team foul, 10. The Mouton comes back on the defensive side and picks up his third personal. Very aggressive. Has been the Turpins in the second half defensively. A lot of trapping, a lot of gambling on defense. Going for steals. Trying to wear down this George Mason ball club. Hey guys, 
Shooting two, Laranega. Makes the first. And for some of you, you'll see this game coming up next. UNC Greensboro taking on the number one seed, Stanford Cardinal. Timeout on the floor. And a timeout with 7.34 left. Maryland by one over George Mason. Maryland and George Mason in a battle all afternoon, 70 to 69, Terrapins. 7.34 left here in Boise, side of the West region. 10 lead changes. George Mason with the biggest lead of eight. Dixon trying to work it inside, back out. Now Blake has it. Picked up by Young. Muta had a good look. Holden baseline, draws the double team. Good patience by Maryland. Evans kicked the ball. Seven oh nine left here in Boise. Maryland and George Mason. The Terrapins lead by one. George Mason had a three-point lead at the half, 36-33. It's been a game George Evans will remember. 24 points for the Patriots while. Byron Mouton is thrown down 20 for the Terrapins. Dixon, left hand wouldn't go. Follow shot off the rim. Anderson rebounds. And here comes Heron across midcourt. It's been a game of control. Who can control the tempo? In the first half, George Mason was able to do it with the inside play of Evans. In the second half, Merlin has been able to pick up the pace with their aggressive traveling defense, but still only a one-point lead for the Turtles. George Mason, the 14th seed in the West against the third seed, Maryland Terrapins. Evans, 30 years of age, spent seven years in the Army. A terrific player in the Colonial Athletic Association. Blake has it, nice feet down low. Shot wouldn't go, the follow wouldn't go by Morris. And Young rebounds for George Mason. The Jesse Young. James in my book today, he's got 11 points, but he's done a lot of dirty work. He's done a lot of things that are show up in the intangible category. I mean, he's he's shut Terrence Morris down. I mean, Terrence Morris hadn't been a factor. He's gotten some strong offensive boards, hit his free throws, and just been extremely active. And there he is again. Well, the triple team on Evans and able to break out on the baseline was Young and a whistle. And the take on, on on Jesse Young is that he's been a little soft in physical games. Not today. He's been very active, very strong to the basket. You take a look at the game summary. Well, that's even. I mean, that is even. 55% for George Mason from the floor. Maryland, 54. Turnover's even. Young knocks down the first one to tie it up. Last foul was on Mouton, and that is his four. Mouton picked up the foul, and that's going to be four. Uh, Byron Mouton has to take a seat with 20 points. Second shot off the mark. Holden has it for Maryland. Blake spots up. Too strong. Young, another board. To me, you're right. Young has been the most valuable player for for George Mason behind George Evans. I mean, he's been a guy that we didn't expect to have this kind of impact. Three-pointer, too strong. Evans kicks to Young, back out to Evans. Laranega, good patience and a fresh 35 on the shot clock. See, Evans got that rebound. He was nine feet from the bucket, but he won't shoot a shot that's uncomfortable or out of his game. Loose ball picked up by Maryland. Here comes Blake across midcourt. Three-pointer. Short price. The little guy for George Mason. 5'8". Like a bulldog running through there. 70-70. Under five minutes left to Herring. Puts it on the floor. Backs in. Loose ball. Save. Nope. Stepped out of bounds. Maryland might be one of the best teams at getting their hands 
on the ball while the shot's going up. They are reaching in on just about every single shot and pass. Gary Williams wearing a groove on that sideline. 12th season in College Park, 11th ranked in both polls. And James Maryland is one of 12 schools to be ranked in the top 25 from start to finish. They had a little slide midseason, but I have to say, this is a team, the Maryland Terpers, that can play with anybody in the country. Great player in Dixon. Morris, who hadn't been affected tonight. Wilcox, big inside with Lonnie Baxter. They're big and they're small enough to mix it up with most teams. Whistle inside, away from the ball. And that goes against Evans. And that's going to be four on George, on George Evans. Evans. Third personal team foul Check that three. On the Patriots. 24 points for Evans. A three-time Colonial Athletic Association three Player of the Year. Four, three in a row. The only other player, David Robinson. Did it in 85, 86, 87. Shooting one more. A little surprise, but referee thinks otherwise. Holden with his third point. You look at the brackets, Georgia State led by Lefty Drizel already beating the sixth seed in the West Wisconsin. And the winner of this game will get to play Georgia State on Saturday. And the anticipation of Georgia State playing Lefty Drizel's former school, Maryland. And don't Must forget, yeah, yeah. Lefty, Lefty was in College Park for a long time, 1970 to 1986. Like a blocking foul. But interest, interestingly enough, Craig, you know, you may have some fans from Maryland who might forget that Lefty is not their coach anymore and may pull for George, Georgia State on a few occasions. Eighth straight a tournament appearance for Gary Williams and the Terrapins. And the first shot finds its uh, way down for Herring. And coming up next, for those of you awaiting UNC Greensboro against the number one seed Stanford Cardinal, we'll get you out to that game here momentarily. Both shots fall down. Herring with 13 and a timeout in Boise. 72-72, George Mason of Maryland. Three fifty-two left here in Boise. 72 all between George Mason and Maryland. Double bonus situation for both teams. Timeouts, two apiece, and the possession arrow belongs to Maryland. And you know, we mentioned at the beginning of the second half that Maryland's only come back from a deficit only once, and that was at Duke. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out, if they're capable of, of, of planning a close game like this. It was very rare this season for Maryland to trail at the half. They did here in Boise only the fifth time as the whistle. Dixon after the shot. And when you're a team that's, you know, not used to coming from behind, when you're used to being out with big leads, jumping out and, and putting up big spurts, it could be difficult when you get in a big game, a close game, coming from behind. Dixon with the first was 17. And Wednesday here on CBS, 9 Eastern, 8 Central, Big Apple. One of the hottest shows around that's right here on CBS. Dixon makes his second. For the four court pressure, but George Mason has handled the pressure well today. Five Go. ties, look at that James, 10 lead changes. Yeah, they'll be looking for Herring or Evans. Herring's doing a good job running the baseline, coming off those picks. From Herring drove baseline, now they feed Evans. Put it on the floor, and a whistle. Very quick. He puts that pivot foot, and he'll just jump. Well, the beauty of Evans' games is, you know, he'll go to every gear. One possession, he'll give you first and second gear. Lure you to sleep. The second possession, you know, he'll, he'll go medium speed. Then all of a sudden, he'll make a quick spin move as he did there. And caught the defense off guard. 
Knocks down the free throw, 25 for George Evans. We talked so much about his military career, and you have to go back. You know, he played Army basketball, Aberdeen Army base in Maryland. His last year on the base, James, about 40 points, 18 rebounds. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he's also one of just one of four players in NCAA history to record more than 200 steals, assists, and block shots for a career. Joining former Kansas star Danny Manning, LaSalle standout Lionel Simmons, and the current Duke star Shane Battier. So he's pretty good company. Pretty good company and some pretty good stats. From the corner, short. Over the back with no call. Blake reached over uh, Price. But I got to tell you, this game is, in my opinion, it's right for the taking for George Mason. You know, Maryland's expected to win. They're not up. George Mason is executing. Big shot by Heron. Two-pointer. 15 for Heron out of Chicago. Now, this is when the wrists get a little tight. You're the team that's supposed to be up and winning. Gary Williams taking a timeout. A lot of indecision and uncertainty on this Maryland ball club right now. Two minutes left. Herring with a good look. Sinks it in Boise. Express. Welcome back into Boise. Maryland, one of the hotter teams coming down the stretch run of the season. They won at Wake Forest, knocked off North Carolina State, Oklahoma, at Duke, Virginia, Wake Forest, and then nearly got Duke again in the ACC semifinals, but lost by two. And right now in trouble of maybe being knocked out of this tournament. Well, you want to talk about incentive for George Mason. The big picture now, everyone anticipating the, the game between Georgia State and Maryland. They expected Georgia State to win, but George Mason says, look, we have something to say about that. Incentive. And so far, they've showed it here this afternoon. Herring picks up the foul. That's going to be three on Herring and Dixon at the free throw line. Can never afford to look past any opponent. I don't care if you're one seed or 16 seed. You don't look past an opponent in the NCAA tournament because there's no tomorrow. Maryland as a team, 19 of 20 from the free throw line. Now 20 of 21 and a 20-point game for Dixon. I'd look for, for Herring once again. Maryland. 0-5 record in games decided by three points or less. So, you know, when you, when you think of that stat, when you look at the way George Mason has handled the pressure and, and they're executing well, this game is right there for George Mason. Patience by the Patriots in the corner, back up. Price thought about the three. Oh, Traffic okay. flies by, pumps it up. No. Guess who? Well, Craig, that's just smart experience. He knew the shot was going up. Right now, he's in their fighting position. He gets the inside position, and from there, between Mars and Holden, they couldn't couldn't stop it. Three-point try, rims out. The foul was on Morris, his second. George Mason by one. 105 left. Now the rim gets a little bit smaller now. You gotta knock down a bucket. That rim can't get smaller. Oh, it got big for Blake. <laughs> he must have been listening to me. In fact, he's been a sharp shooter most of the game. He's hit some big buckets, not afraid to take the shot. Blake with 13. Maryland by two under a minute left. Evans to Laranega. Ball stripped. Loose. And then Laranega reaches in and fouls Mutai. 
You have to be aware of Maryland. They do a great job. As we look at Evans on the floor, injured a little bit. Yeah, shaken up. But Maryland does a great job of getting their hands on the basketball. A terrific player George in George Evans being looked at with 27 points. That was the fifth foul on Larinaga, so he's out. Rob Anderson well, will be checking into the lineup. If you look in the middle of the lane, you're going to see Evans going down to set a pick and runs into, I'm not sure who the Maryland player is, but he runs into a Maryland player and gets hit in the stomach a little bit. With an elbow. Now, I don't know whether that that means he got the wind knocked out of him or whether it was around the rib area, but you see right there, he runs right into the elbow, right into the rib cage. And that's how you that's how you crack ribs, and, and I've had that before, and it's just it's very painful. He got a good sharp elbow right into the midsection below the rib cage. And uh, he's a strong man, so you know he took a, a you know a big hit to have him down still. Evans averaging just under 19 points a game this season. His Rock Maryland for 27. You know, he told us once, James, that what he's been through, and he's trying to downplay this too in his life as he's turned 30 back on January 31st. Yeah, he spent seven years in the Army, Haiti, the Persian Gulf, Belgium. But he said, you know what? Basketball, nothing like it is out there when you're looking at war. Let's go to Bob Winslow. Bob. Well, what we have here is a situation where he has to come out of the game because he, he stopped the game with this injury. The trainer came out, so he has to go to the bench and come out. It's crucial with 42 seconds left to go. Larinaga could call timeout and get him back in, but he's not going to do that. He needs to get Evans back in the game as soon as possible if he's okay. I'll find out if he's okay in one moment. And the thing is, a lot of cases, you know, when you have a situation like that, when a player has to go out of the game, you know, you would commit a quick foul and maybe get him back in. But both teams in the penalty, you cannot do that. 42 seconds left in the game. There's no guarantee when you're going to get him back in the ball game. He's trying to regain his breath. Mouton at the free throw line to shoot a pair. Big make. Luton with 21 points. And here comes George Evans. Didn't stay down long. Luton, by the way, James perfect from the free throw line. Eight of eight. Nine of nine. And they will not have Evans come in. The clock did not move. Price now calls a timeout. timeout. They want Evans in. George Mason. Can't blame him for that. We'll take a break. Maryland by four in Boise. Bobby, how was the weekend? Went to the in-laws. They had cable. <laughs> Basic. For it, so. Man, I'm sorry. The kids okay? They're still young. Well, listen, Bob. <clears throat> if, uh, if you need to talk. <laughs> we love this stuff even more than you do. Now get the best in home entertainment with a $200 mail-in rebate. George Mason. Maryland trying to find a way to stay alive. The third seed in the West. Leading the 14th seed, George Mason Patriots. 81-77 here in Boise. 40 seconds and change remaining. And George Evans, after being uh, hit in the midsection, is back on the floor for the Patriots. Yeah, they couldn't afford to have him sit out the last 42 seconds. A tough turnover by Lyonega. George Mason was right in the ball game. There's Harrington. He's done that all day. A strong body to the hole. Oh, it looked like maybe he pulled a hip. He's going to have to take a knee. Boy, they grabbed the back of his back on the right side after the drive. Well, you know, there's an area right there above the hip that really hurts if, you, if you're getting hit in that little bony area. 
And right there, it looks like he may have gotten a slight bump in the back as he grabs hold of that right high back area. Juan Dixon picked up the foul, his third. Perry now with 18 points, 6 of 13 from the floor. Now, third from the free throw line. If there's any pain now, this free throw could be big, but he knocks it down. Five of five for Herring. 19. 81 80, Maryland. And their free throw shooting, whoever wins this game, if the Terrapins pull this out, they'll go back and look at 96% from the line, 22 of 23. Their season average 69. And that's an incredible fact right there. And you need free throws at this stage of the tournament and in the NCAA tournament because team scouts you. They know what you do, and a lot of times they have a tendency to take away some of your strengths. George Mason has taken away Baxter pretty much. They've taken Morris out of the game, but the free throws have kept going. Big miss. With the exception of that big miss by Morris. And now, Morris has not been involved in the game at all today. So it doesn't surprise me that he misses a free throw. His energy hadn't been there. Missed them both! George Mason basketball. He was perfect four for four when he towed the line, and he missed both opportunities, and now a timeout. A timeout in Boise. 81-80, Maryland. The Internet helps you reach millions of customers around the globe. But who's keeping you in touch? with the internet. Fujitsu, the possibilities are infinite. That was a final timeout for Maryland. George Mason still with one remaining. Possession arrow could play a factor, pointing down to the Terrapins. Well, I think the strategy will be to look for the last shot. With 26 seconds left, Morris missed two free throws in a row. George Mason got the rebound. They have really played their game to the T this afternoon. They've kept Maryland close. Maryland has not been able to run the basketball as much. And right now, this could be a huge upset now, in the making. And James, you know Gary Williams is telling his players, George Evans, George Evans, George Evans. But don't forget, sometimes Eric Herring gets lost in this, in this big picture and how much pressure they put on Evans. He draws a lot of double teams, and many times Herring will just jump out. Well, and they get a good look. He's at 19 points in this game. In the last three or four possessions, they have looked for Eric Herring on the left side of the wing. That's where he likes to get it. Evans will roll out, and Herring will ISO. So it'll be really interesting to see who they go to here now. Price bounces to Herring. One thing they have to watch out for, Maryland has created some turnovers. They get their hand in on most balls, so you have to take care of the basketball, and they are looking for Evans R. Last touch by Evans. It's going to be Maryland basketball. Maryland ball. With six seconds left. Timeout, Patriots. And a timeout. Patriots called timeout. Six seconds to go. Take me fishing and show me how to drive the boat. Take me fishing, so we'll always have something in common. Take me fishing, because my wedding will be sooner than you think. Well, this pass will come right at you. And it, you know what, James? It never touched. Evans, but still out of bounds. George Mason went right between his legs. Went right between his legs, and George Mason wanted to say that there may have been a slight deflection of the ball before it went through Evans' legs, but not so. 
and that is heartbreaking to have an opportunity to put the Terrapins away and not be able to get a shot off. I would expect them to put the ball in Eric Heron's hands and just let him ISO from a 1-4 format. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Terrence Morris will inbound to Dixon. And a quick foul, a whistle. Now Morris, remember, last trip down missed the free throws. This time it's going to be one Dixon. And Dixon has been perfect. Five of five, 20 points. With the game on the line, 4.9 seconds, though, I've seen some, some big misses by some really good free throw shooters. Dixon. Sinks the first for 21 points. Right now, a two point game. George Mason still, though, Dixon can make this free throw. It'd be a three point game. Rims it around and in. 22. And pushing it up. Three seconds left. Price at the buzzer, and Maryland advances on to round two to take on the former Maryland head coach, Lefty Drizel. Three eighty. What a battle between the ACC and the Colonial Athletic Association, Maryland and George Mason. And I got to tell you, Craig, what an opportunity slipped away from George Mason on a turnover. The last possession, you're going to see Price coming up. Really doesn't get close enough to the arc. I thought maybe he could have taken one more dribble, but. That calf is bothering you know, him. He's still James, down. You're right. He's you know, still down. That is right. He is still down. And you look at the emotion. Oh, it wore out. Gary Williams. A lot of emotion in this game in Boise. Well, he knows he got away with one here this afternoon. George Mason had an opportunity to put his team away. But the turnovers, one by Larinaga early, and then the one by Evans. So Maryland moves on to play Georgia State. And the head coach, the former Terp, Lefty Drizel. And our Chevrolet players of the game for George Mason. George Evans, 27 points, 10 of 15 from the floor. Brian Mouton, 22 points for Maryland. So the final again, Maryland 83, 80 over George Mason. Let's go back to New York City, and here's Greg Gumbel. All right, Craig, thanks very much. So Maryland moves on with a three-point victory over George Mason. I wish you could have seen Mr. Kellogg here in the studio screaming to pressure the dribbler on the inbound. Really? I mean, you've got an opportunity to not allow a guy to get into a rhythm on the shot with four and a half seconds to go, and they were backing off, obviously afraid to foul. But Maryland fought a game George Mason team. Give them a lot of credit, and Maryland found a way. Great free throw shooting was the difference. There is another game underway right now in San Diego in the West Region. UNC, Greensboro, and Stanford are just underway in the first half and in the Cardinal with a two-point lead on UNC, Greensboro. Also today in the East Region, Hofstra's 18-game winning streak snapped by UCLA. 61-48 was the final score. UCLA outscored Hofstra 24-5 over the last 12 and a half minutes. A final in the East in Uniondale. The Iowa Hawkeyes, 69-56 winners over the Creighton Blue Jays. Iowa, the only victory by a Big Ten team today. The West Region game in San Diego today. St. Joe's over Georgia Tech, 66-62. The winner, that, that game, St. Joe's plays the winner of Stanford and UNC Greensboro. West Regional Action in Boise. Georgia State by one over the Badgers of Wisconsin. Lefty Drizel's team moves on to meet Maryland. In East Regional play in Greensboro, Utah State over the Ohio State Buckeyes, 77 to 68 in overtime. And in the East Region in Uniondale, Holy Cross falls to the Kentucky Wildcats. The Wildcats win it by a score of 72 to 68. We will see you again primetime coming up 730 Eastern time this evening. Until then, have yourselves a good evening. We'll see you later.